Let's make it happen. Just you know the southern trap music, oh, exactly. Not to just rock, hip hop, country, jazz, gospel music, um, 
and, and I was listening to some of your music and you really have a versatile sound because in some of the songs you're talking about, you know, very deep, um, you know, meaningful things. And then some you're talking about water with it. Because I have to give them everything, you know, never limit yourself, never be afraid to try something different. Right. And, and a lot of artists just stay in one box. Right, they do. They stay in one box. And and I don't know how you feel as a female MC about Nicki Minaj. Is that someone that you admire or do you feel another kind of way about her? I mean, everybody has their own way. So on a business aspect, I salute Nicki. Everything she's doing. But lyrically, you know, being a parent, some of the things that she speaks on, I really don't agree with. But like I said, everybody has their own way. Well, the reason I brought her up is because she is one of those versatile artists where she is. she's on pop records and then she's on track records. And you see that, you know, as far as the business side of music, exactly. that allows you to really make a lot of money because you can have a record playing on a top 40 station and then you can have a record playing on an urban station as okay. well. So that's what you're looking for as far as your career is, is being able to kind of tap into the various uh, radio outlets, the various genres of music and, and make your mark. Exactly. So talk to me about Class and Session. That's a mixtape that you put out. Um, Futuristic Beats. He produced the he whole produced mixtape. It. Um, salute to Futuristic Beats. He's from New York. Um, I titled it Class and Session because I was going through a transition at the time when I was writing that mixtape. And um, I just want people to take notes on how to deliver music, what to speak on, because like I said uh, a second ago, everybody's, like, everybody sounds the same to me. Right. And people need to switch it up to get back how it's supposed to be. It, it has gotten kind of to the point where I guess they see one person has success doing a certain type of record, and so now everybody who wants to be successful is afraid to try something different, and so they do go and do the same, you know, working in radio, we see that a yeah, lot. Yeah, I know you do, but being an artist, you have to be creative. When, when you're going to sit down to write a song, you know, what is it that inspires you, that motivates you? Is it an experience that you've had? Is it something every, that you see happen? Every song that I have ever did is either from my personal experience, um, someone close to me, or what I see on the news. Because like you said, you know, I'm versatile. Mm -hmm. So one track I might talk about politics, one track I might talk about love, mm -hmm. just whatever I feel at the time. And I kind of let the beat take me away. When, when you're talking about love, you know, being a female artist, do do you talk about your personal love experiences? Oh, I have a couple of tracks that are very personal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, after you record them and you put it down on the beat, do you ever think back, like, oh, man, I don't know if I should have done that? I really did. At one point in my career, I, I really did have that feeling because of what, I wrote a song about my ex. Uh -huh. And, um... We ended up getting back together, so oh, yeah. it was kind of like, oh. listening to the music and we're riding in the car together, and I'm going, in. Oh, yeah, we skipped yeah. out that song real yeah. quick, don't listen, but that was when I was mad at you. Right. <laughs> but, but does music for you, is, is it that outlet where, you know, when you are upset or when you're feeling a certain way, that's when you really go and write and you sit down and kind of allow that as your outlet? That's true. Music is definitely how I express myself. You've done stuff with Juvenile, Mr. Cheeks, DJ Drama, Princess of Crime Mom. DJ Fahrenheit, Little J, uh, D4L, the Franchise Boys. Looking and working with those people who, you know, have made it nationally on a certain level, different levels, do you take stuff away from them? Are you looking to learn from them? Oh, uh, I, what ask, have you learned? Uh, I ask a lot of questions. Um, one thing I've learned is you have to be, you know, stand out with your business on this. You know, because becoming an artist, when you first start out, you just make the music. Right. You don't know the importance of copywriting your music. Mm -hmm. You don't know the importance of registering or BMI, ASCAP, Reading because contracts. people, exactly, especially contracts. Mm -hmm. 
because a lot of the people that I have worked with, those people, you know, they were in situations that they didn't really want to be in, but they didn't understand that fine print. Right. So, you know, it was an honor to be able to connect with them because they educated me on that. Right. So you were able to learn from their mistakes. Exactly. To not make those and same mistakes. It's way more than music. Like, it's really it a business, is. and it's pretty much 95% business and 5% music. Right. And I'm glad you said that because I do think that a lot of artists sometimes miss that aspect of it and then they do end up in a bad situation that they can't get out of yeah. and you know it's unfortunate because sometimes they stop making music so we don't get the gems that we may have gotten from them because they're just so frustrated with everything that's happened to them on the business side yeah. so speaking on that you know being a woman in hip-hop is not easy no matter what <laughs> what um, area you're in, whether you're behind the scenes and you're an artist, you're in radio, DJ, whatever, what what has your experience been like and what are some of the lessons that you've learned being a woman in hip hop? Oh. <laughs> How can I say this edited? <laughs> um, being a woman in hip hop, people will try you, you mm -hmm. know? They will try you. So my experience is I had people, you know, producers, they, oh, I want to help you, take you to the next level, and they just try to rub me the wrong way. Right. Just have respect for yourself at all times, integrity. <laughs>
because she was the queen of the queen city. Make sure y'all check out the video on YouTube. We got like 3,000 views so far. We just dropped it like a month ago. Let me get that to you. He's got going on and what he's been doing, you know, the last minute, you know, last time I talked to you, you know, you was rocking with the popping tags. And, right, right. You know, all that was, you know, growing up on the videos and all that. So, you yeah. know, tell us what you've been up to, what you got going on these days. Since popping tags, man, you know, we did Swag Mod too. Um, they both got, you know, a good amount of views on YouTube. I got on some attention from those. Um, I was nominated for a video of the year, I think it was 2013 in South Carolina Music Awards for okay. Swag Mind, so you know, we was doing things with that. Okay. Had Deja Moore in that, she done moved on to do bigger things like King Magazine with 50 Cent, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so that was yeah. a good look. Okay. You know, I still in the studio, man, working on this Neon Black project. I've been recording that for up was for almost two years, you know what I'm saying? The, the projects I put out before that was, you know, they were side projects or whatever, but I was always working on that. Like mixtapes and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, okay. like Fly School and the Book of Quest. Okay. And, uh, the uh, compilation that we had with uh, uh, Quest Field Music, Night Lights. Like, okay. I'm still recording Neon Black through all that. But hopefully by CIAA time, maybe Neon Black will be done. Okay, you know, okay. We'll have to pre-release copies out. Wow, speaking of CIAA, you got anything you're doing particularly on your end as far as a a show or you got anything going with that? Right now, I don't got nothing booked, but you know, I'm just out there doing heavy promo, heavy networking, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's sometimes you get locked into certain things and you can't do 
what you really want to do because you're here for a certain amount of time and there's all this stuff going on over here, over here. So, you know, this year we're just going to use this time and do a lot of bunch of networking, handing out CDs. Like I said, we'll have those pre-release copies. So, okay. Questville definitely got some stuff in the works, man. What's up with the digital distribution? Are you trying to push on the digital level as far as getting it out there? Or, you know? oh, most definitely, most definitely. You know, we're doing iTunes, right. we're doing um, Spotify, trying to get on with every every venue that we can as far as the digital is concerned because in this day and age, you know, everything's digital. Everything. <laughs> everything. Yeah, 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 that's why I say a lot of people are still on that CD thing, but, you know, honestly speaking, it's not cost effective. Right. You know, you can get a lot more done. You can spread the word a lot quicker with the digital. So, um, on that note, digital distribution, you said it's on iTunes, you're on Amazon, uh, Spotify. Yeah. Uh, any others besides those three? I mean, usually when you put out the project, like it's like 34 di- or 35 different networks and different venues that they put your stuff out. Okay. So, I mean, I couldn't name all of them, but yeah, yeah, I mean, even quite stuff quite as far as China, you know what I'm wow. saying? It's distributed out there as well, but that's digital, so. Yeah, know. yeah, exactly. Have you ever done any tours like overseas just yet? Or? Nah, man, hadn't had stamped that passport yet. Uh, you gotta we do definitely that. want to do that, man. Yeah, we want to get over there sure. in London town and do yeah, stuff, you know? Yeah, because they, they probably feeling it over there. You know, a lot of times you go overseas and I love yeah. it. Even way bigger than local, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So overseas, a lot of people start their careers overseas and it blows up so big there. By the time they come back home, they're huge. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So that's definitely a good look that you're looking at that overseas going going forward. Um, and I, I mean, Questville being a, like a label, right? Definitely. You have a couple right. artists that you are coming, you know, coming up the ranks. You got anybody right. you want to discuss and talk about that's working on you? Yeah, I got uh, one of my artists, Jake Rains. Like he's working on his second project. Like that'll be out soon. Hopefully by CIAA we'll have some uh-huh. copies out for him. And you know, he a white artist, so, but he uh-huh. rap. Like okay. he can okay. split that real. That's so what's up. That's what's you got up. that working for him. I got Doughboy in my, um, in my company as well. We got a couple of producers coming up. Uh-huh. I also deal with the Black Hippies, you know, uh-huh. Rocky Spitz. You know, okay. they got some okay. stuff coming out. He just recently released an album that I produced. 90% of that, you know what I'm saying? So that was definitely production. Really I didn't know he was on the production. Yeah, man, John E. Quest, man. Oh, he snapped right. everything. Oh, got you, everything. got you. Okay, I didn't even know he was on that. On yeah, that right there. I like, I like to be able to touch every part of the creative process, you know what I mean? Like, I take pride in that and knowing how to mix, master, engineer, write, produce, you know, whatever's needed to be done, yeah. even as far as graphics is concerned, you know what I mean? Yeah. I like to have my hand in everything. You need to have that nowadays, yeah. because, you know, you never know when something falls short, whether, you know, somebody can't make it, or, you know, somebody right. don't come through, at least, you know, you can pick it up where they left off and keep it moving. Right. Now, would you, let me ask you a question. What do you think about that recent, uh, the show they got called Empire? What's your view on that show? You think it's a good look for the, for the hip-hop community? You think it's, you know, what do you think? What's your opinion on it? Man, entertainment is entertainment. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, okay. You can't is it real? Is it you know? Is it Memorex? What's the situation? How do you feel about it, honestly? I mean, real is relative to the person. You know what I'm saying? If you want to look at that and be like, okay, that's how rap life is, right. then you know, right. by all means, you walk around and think that. But right. if right. you involved in actual, you know, making music in the music business, you know, some of that stuff is a farce. Some of that stuff is like maybe taken from truth, but it's not all, you know, it's not all blitz and glam. Like some of that stuff is smoke and mirrors. But at the same time. I don't take nobody, you know, don't take no, nothing away from anybody's creativity as far as entertainment goes, and that's definitely the show. And that's why, you know, when Give Me The Mic show in particular, it's called Give Me The Mic show, The Chronicles, because I take you into the real life of right. what it's really like to grind every day, to be showing up at concerts, to, you know, work with promoters and things like that. A lot of times, like you said, people see all the, the glitz and the glamour, mm-hmm. and they don't understand you could have been doing this for 10 to 15 years before you even get seen, yep. and they're like, well, you know, I come in the game and I want to be like, oh, I'm driving this and I'm, I'm sporting that. It ain't like that. It's a hard and long road. Right. So that's why, you know, we felt, you know, my duty to just kind of get into the trenches and talk about the chronicles, right. the real life, you know what I'm saying? So. That's what you can look forward to. Anytime anyone's on this show, or anytime anyone is thinking about coming to the show, they're gonna give you the real, the real. And when it comes to the Chronicles, give me Mike's show, that's what we got the Chronicles here. So, but on that note, give me Mike's show, we're gonna wrap it up, and we're gonna get into a performance with John Quest in just a minute. Hold on a second, man, check us out, man. www.questville.com, man. Questville Music, bringing you Questville Entertainment. Everything that's related to Questville, you can find us there. Hit me up, Instagram, uh, Questville, Twitter, Johnny Quest. I ain't hard to find, man. That's right, that's right. Working. My bad on that. I'm supposed to shout that out then. Peace. You ain't seen fresh, you ain't seen fly, but I am the guy. We'll tank up the gas, I'll pack up the gas. It's loud when I mash out. So loud when I mash out. I mash out. I heard you was looking for me.